Hello, uh, Jim Howard here. Echo, what's the date? Today is Tuesday, January 24th. Of 2017. I uh, got Echo working again. I don't think there was any problem with... What do you call Sorry, it? Sorry, I didn't understand the question I heard. I got... Uh, ECHO working, Amazon ECHO dot working. Wasn't working for a couple of days. Um, I don't think it was the device, and I was thinking it was my router. I think it was just the internet for some reason. Because uh, this camera is sitting on top of my TCL Roku TV, and I, I don't watch it a lot. I can't do two things. It, one time I've I know lots of you can I there was a guy one time in Switzerland and I was chatting with him and he was creating images uh, for me you may have seen my green it's a green screen that has my pictures a bunch of my pictures on it and says Howard's notebook or whatever while I was chatting with him we were chatting back and forth I sent him the the I mean, he did all that and just uh, amazing and I can't I can't do two things at the same time so um, I don't like watch a lot of TV while I'm doing something else but uh, I was watching a couple things during those couple of days and it, it would say uh, Netflix or whatever would say we have a problem, can't uh, watch it later or watch it another thing. And I, I think that's just, I think it was an internet problem of some sort. Um, I think I've decided again that my, I moved my, as I told you in another video, moved the bed out of here into the other room. And uh, I moved the, again, the brand new, I think 27 inch monitor, I moved it in here Right now, my wide monitor that I've been using is actually sitting over there not being used. I hooked up a one of my old monitors to the other computer. I think I'm going to put Linux on it. Windows and this Windows just drives me crazy. I've been playing with versions of Linux forever and I always come back to Windows I want OS 2 years ago there was a thing called an operating system called OS 2 and I loved it um, so uh, oh I think I mentioned to you in one of the videos a long time ago that I ordered a bag and this thing came from China it took forever took forever to get here and I'm going to review it but I got it had a little bit of a smell when it got here from the material or whatever but after it was out of the plastic wrap thing that it was in I don't smell it anymore uh, I don't have a laptop computer and so I can't I don't it doesn't look big enough for a real big laptop so I I don't have a laptop computer to check it with it looks nice and the price to me seemed uh, seemed reasonable but I, I, when I get a chance I will review it and put a link to it you do know I need to put some type of a 90% of the time or maybe a hundred percent of the time when there's a link underneath my video to something on Amazon, on yeah, Amazon store, I get a commission if you if you uh, purchase it. Actually, I get a if you use uh, my one of my Amazon links and you go to Amazon. Uh, let's say I have a link for yellow notepads or uh, a battery or something. 
if you go there and you don't buy that, but if you, while you're still connected from going there, if you go someplace, if you go and buy a big screen TV or an expensive uh, computer or something, rather, I would get the commission for that. And it doesn't cost you, of course, anything. So please use my, uh, please use my links. Nobody, I've never got any large amount, I've never got any large commissions. I get about, I think about $24 a month from Amazon, people clicking on Amazon links. Uh, here's my camera bag that I've had a while. You may have seen it. Uh, I like it. Uh, also, I, I've got uh, extra speaker with a battery in it that can use, be used to charge things. Uh, a battery pack or whatever. This is a 10,000 milliamp is in here. I never need any of these things, but uh, I think I've got another one in here someplace. Yeah, I do. There's this one which charges from solar power, but uh, the only thing is it would take it would take forever. It would take forever to charge up by solar power. So I've got those things in there. I kind of like when I went to Washington D.C. for two weeks uh, last year to uh, visit my daughter and son-in-law. I took that bag and uh, somebody on the aircraft, you know, on another seat, you know, on a seat. Uh, I want to know if I was a professional photographer. Complimented me on my bag. That's kind of nice. I don't usually have people compliment me on uh, my clothing or anything else. I do get, uh, you people are really, really nice to me on uh, YouTube here. Very rare. I had a guy the other day he left some nasty comments. It's very rare for me to get... Uh, Negative. I don't know if you feel sorry for old people or what, but I get you. Pe you treat me really well, and keep in mind that I I express myself like on politics. You know exactly where you know my position, and about half of you should you know hate my position, and I still don't get. Uh, Usually, you know, usually you just, yeah, I just kind of ignore the old man. It's really nice of you, and I get thumbs up. Um, I don't, of course, I guess the more traffic you get, the more hate you get. I don't get that much traffic. I have 2,000 subscribers. Uh, let's see. I have 2,000 subscribers. Um, what do I want to look for? YouTube, that's it. And I've had over a million views, but um, my YouTube videos, when I make a video, uh, you can see here, I, I make about $25 a month from Google, from YouTube, you know. Um, my videos usually get, real quick, 50, uh, maybe 90 views, and then that's sort of it. Uh, my video on cat spraying got 94 views, got eight thumbs up. My video uh, about, uh, I think there was a lot more to it than the lady about, I think I went into other sub, I think I went into political rant, but uh, lady that does breastfeeding videos, she's got a four-year-old that she breastfeeds. 
Then I saw a video the other day of a lady who has an eight-year-old girl who is breastfeeding. Uh, but you can see uh, 90 views, 64 views, 96 views, 114 views, 84 views, and actually my cooking video got 205 views and 14 thumbs up. And if you didn't watch it, I mean, I uh, sort of, I was sort of having fun, trying to be funny. I mean, I dumped a, a box, you know, of rice mix into water and uh, cooked it, and that was it. But that got 205 views, but I don't get a lot of views. Uh, if I got a ton of views, and I'm sure the number of uh, the amount of hateful stuff would would go up. When I hit my uh, bulletin board system, um, when I hit my bulletin board system. Uh, Uh, I didn't, when I started out in Kansas City, Missouri, there was, that was like, well, I got my first computer like 1978, unless you count the Texas Instrument calculator that was programmable, TI-58, but my first computer was in 1978, Radio Shack Model 1. I had to write my own, well, I didn't know what a modem was. I read everything I could, uh, you know, on computers. And uh, I, uh, there was magazines and they mentioned in the, you know, modem. I didn't know what a modem was, but I ordered one. And then when I got it and hooked it up, there was in Kansas City, Missouri, an Apple's user group, which my modem would not connect with because the modem that I purchased was not wired for RS-232. It was wired for a different port for some reason. There was uh, a guy, and I was kind of lucky, in the Kansas City, Missouri area. He uh, wrote the BBS or program for the TRS-80. So here I was right there in the same city, so when I called into his system uh, at 300 baud, um, you know, I didn't have to pay a long distance phone rates or anything. Back then, phone rates were really expensive for making long distance calls. And if you made a long distance call in your state, it was even more, you know, even more expensive. But anyway, there was, uh, what was it called? Form 80. His was Form 80. And then there was another guy. This guy was really ahead of his time. He didn't have any traffic going to his thing. But he had a commodities. He'd set up a commodities bulletin board system. And that was it. So there was only two I could log into. So then I figured out what was the problem was that, that for, to get into the Apple thing, you had to use RS-232 port or something. So I purchased another modem, and they were not cheap, and then I could get into the Apple group. There wasn't anything with the Apple uh, group that I could, that was interesting at all. And uh, then at that point, I set up my, I wrote a, in basic a, because the, the uh, well, BBS the documentary, you can go to YouTube, do a search, and I think it's like, I don't know, eight parts or something, you can watch it for free. Uh, the guy who made the uh, documentary uh, has released it or announced that you can watch it for free, you can copy it, uh, you can give it to somebody else. I'm not sure exactly what... Uh, whether it's open domain, 
I'm, I'm sure exactly what it, you know, you can do that. If you go and watch the video, the documentary, which is three DVDs, you'll actually see that I'm in. He came to Carrollton, Texas and interviewed me for three hours, uh, you know, recorded it for three hours. So he was going to really, he released a few of those videos that he made when he interviewed, he released his DVD. Now on this DVD, I'm on there five or six times for a few, for a few seconds. I do get the biggest laugh though. I went out to, I think it was San Jose, California. I was the one who traveled the furthest from Florida at that time in order to go to it. And I was the one who traveled the furthest uh, there to see his, uh, pre his preview or whatever, whatever you call a new movie when it is just released, whatever they call it. Uh, and uh, so it's a three DVD set. I'm on there a few times, but he was going to release, he told me that I, he re I think he released about five or six of the videos that he made when he, because you're only on, you know, well, there were some people, like the guy who invented the first uh, BBS program and the first bulletin board system, and the guy who invented X modem, and the guy who invented Phytonet, and all those type of things. I mean, they were in there for a while. I'm in there for a few, if you edit it all up together, probably less than three minutes, my comments. But he, he released about, you know, he interviewed people for some an hour, some two hours, some three hours. So he recorded my interview for three hours, but only a few seconds of it could be put in. He couldn't put everybody in there because he went all over the United States interviewing people. Um, by the way, if it's available, it's available on, Am I mean, it's listed on Amazon. If you can buy it, uh, if he has any still available, please do buy it and support the guy because he did a tremendous service for everybody. But uh, years ago, he released when he, a few, and then he told me, he said, Jim, yours the next one I'm going to release, the three-hour video interview. And... I thought, great. At the time, that was before, before I was, before I think before there was a YouTube, I believe. But now I'm thinking, wow, three hours, high, you know, high definition, or well, uh, you know, good video. Just think I could split it up or I could just make it a three hour video, how long would it take me to upload it, my God. But I could put that there, but he never released that video interview and he didn't release, he hasn't released any others. And so then I was thinking back, uh, what did I say? Oh yeah, I said I screwed this lady and I had sex with this person. Uh, I was trying to think of everything that I, trying to think of what I said, and I thought, man, that's probably the reason he decided not to uh, release my video or any other videos. So, I wish it was available because it would be neat to have it online. I would have to come up some type of, of course, how can I prove it? If somebody sat and watched the entire three hour video, they should get a prize. But, um, oh, so with my computer bulletin board system, it really was, how I called it Howard's Notebook, right? I wrote it in BASIC. I didn't know anything about BASIC. I couldn't, the guy who had the Form 80 headquarters and sold the software for the TRS-80 Model 1 computer, uh, his was set up that you had to have a floppy drive in order to do that. Well, the TRS-80 Model 1 computer, when I got it, it had 4K of operating system and 4K of memory. That's all you could get at the time I got it. And then I upgraded to 16K 
not megs, not gigs of memory and operating system, 16 and 16. And then I got an uh, interface box where I could have 48K of memory. When it booted up, uh, when my BBS booted up and there was 48, when my computer booted up, Radio Shack Model 1 and it said 48K of memory. I loved that. I, oh, who could need 40? I have 48K of memory. Anyway, in order to use this guy's BBS program, you had to have a floppy drive. And I think then floppy drives were held, they were the big ones, and they held 360K. You could put 360K on it. Uh, Radio Shack came out with a computer that Tandy, well, they'd come out with, you know, they, later they came out with a Tandy 2000. I bought two of those. And it had a five gig, no, five megs, I think it is, yeah, five meg hard drive in it, yeah. But anyway, with my Radio Shack Model 1, in order to run that guy's BBS program, you had to have a floppy drive. Okay, in order to have a floppy drive, you had to have an interface device from Radio Shack, which cost $350. And the interface device, that's about all it did. I, I forget, there was a couple other things. It didn't, you know, you didn't get, I think it might have given you 48K of memory, and you could hook a floppy drive up to it. Something like that. It was nothing really. If you, if I couldn't afford really, you know, well, I mean, I could have come up with it, but in order to get a the floppy drive, okay, I then I, I would have had to buy the interface for 350, the floppy drive that you could only write 360K to cost $350. So there was no way I was going to do that. So I had to write a BBS program that used the tape recorder that came with the Radio Shack, Radio Shack Model 1. And like I said, I didn't know basic, so I opened up the basic book and, you know, okay, okay, this command will get it to answer the telephone. That didn't actually come in the basic, but that came in the, um, I think the modem or whatever said, you know, this command will pick up the, re you know. So I got it to answer the phone, pick it up, the line. So the next day I got, I, I looked for, you know, I forget what the command was, display or something, you know. So then I got it to put Howard's notebook. And then the next day, okay, I ask for, you know, username. And I just kept, you know, then of course it'd be a few days I'd go by and I'd flip through the flip through input. Oh, okay. And then loop, you know, and that kind of stuff. And I wrote the BBS program. Um, and the tape recorder was, when it got to be a, a big BBS program or there was a lot of data, the Radio Shack tape recorder, and it was just a regular audio tape recorder. Later when the BBS program was quite large, it took about an hour for the, to, re, to start it. If I turned my computer off and turned my computer on and then I wanted to load the BBS program, it would take about an hour for the data to load in. And sometimes there would be a data error and I would have to start all over. But the idea behind my uh, BBS program was Howard's notebook and the idea, my, my memory is not too great. I'm terrible at numbers, really bad about, for some reason, numbers. You know, I can go in a grocery store and 
look for a product and it's on the shelf and I'm okay this is a dollar ninety nine okay a dollar ninety I think I'll get well this one's a dollar fifty like, this one's a dollar ninety okay I'm gonna get the dollar ninety nine one and I can put it in my cart with a couple other items and I can get up to the checkout and then the clerk says oh this isn't scanning uh, did you happen to notice how much it is like the dollar ninety nine item I can't remember now I can remember things that people said and things that I said, grievances that I did, or when I, I can remember that kind of, I have trouble with some, a little bit with names, remembering names. I can remember stuff like that, but numbers for some reason, they don't compute. And so the idea behind my BBS was it was going to be a list of things. Uh, ham radio uh, repeater list for the Kansas City area, ham radio clubs and the days they met, uh, the days that their net was that was on. Just stuff that I could remember and go to it. And then before long it became, you know, messaging and that type of, you know, that type of stuff. Um, but then other bulletin board systems started up a lot. That became a big thing, as if you watch the documentary, you'll find out about it. And at that time, I thought that my bulletin board system should prevent, should prevent, <laughs> present both sides of an issue. So when the discussion boards were set up, and I got that idea. Well, I sort of had that idea, but there was a guy who had, who set up after me, uh, a uh, free thought, bullet, uh, Dave Hallis, he's passed away now, uh, really nice guy, and that was his idea too, that, uh, or before maybe, that present both sides of the view, of, of, of a point of view, so, so on my bulletin board system, uh, Guns, you know, gun control or whatever, abortion, death penalty, all those things. There would be a presentation, you know, the on each on the whatever the issue, both sides, and then people could comment. Now, one thing I discovered from that is people don't change their point of view, no matter what. And there was people who would put really good, you know, points of view really good ideas, really good, you know, would, that you might think would be persuasive. No. The other point of view, nobody changed, they, people didn't change their mind. Uh, the death penalty, abortion, uh, whatever it was. That kind of told me something. Now later in, uh, I've forgotten now, talk about not remembering numbers, when the World Wide Web was invented. I should remember that. I did remember it. I remembered it a bunch of times, can't remember it now. 1995, that was it. So when the World Wide, I went to from the landline, you know, dialing in over the phone line, I took my bulletin board system to the web. At that point, there were, then there were so many I didn't try. I didn't try then to have Howard's notebook present both sides of the view. I just gave my opinion, my whatever, because there was tons and tons of you could easily find. Now, of course, what we've all discovered is that what has happened is if you are if you're in favor of guns you're going to the gun sites and you're not going to go to any of those other sites that have a different point of view. Fuck them. You're not going there. If the issue is abortion or if it's even politics, you know, if you're a Republican, you're going to go to Fox News. You're going to go to redstate.com. If you're a Democrat, you're going to go to CNN, Huffington Post, uh, 
MSNBC, what you know, and that's really bad because then there's no communication and the other people become the enemy. Anyway, back to the BBS. Um, I never, I was always open to, I never deleted comments. I never deleted, uh, everybody, I let everybody express their point of view. Um, I, um, if you watch the documentary, it's kind of funny, but true. If, if a person had a Radio Shack computer. They hated Apple computers and Atari computers and Texas Instrument computers and uh, what you know it was like and I remember being in a you know a store that wasn't a Radio Shack store and I forget what they sold but somebody was in there looking at an Atari or a Texas Instrument you know computer about thinking thinking about get one and somebody who had a different kind of computer came, you know, another customer came over and said, don't buy that, don't buy that cope, you know, buy a, whatever their pram, you know. Uh, and with, there was, there were bulletin board sites that wouldn't allow people with other types of computers to log in. If, uh, if you had a Apple computer, you weren't welcome on some sites. Also, what a lot of the, and they mentioned this in uh, the, several different people mentioned it in the documentary, if uh, when Christmas came around, all the young boys would get, there'd be a, a ton of modems that were sold and they would hook them up to their computer and then, you know, Christmas Day or whatever, they'd be logging into a computer bulletin board for the first time. And a lot of the systops, system operators or whatever, they would take their bulletin board systems down. They didn't want these young kids logging into their system. They would actually take their systems offline for a few days to try to persuade those boys not to log. I didn't. I kept my system up all the time. I, everybody was welcome. Now the Apple users, for some reason, a bunch of them were hackers and a bunch of them were vandals or whatever, but they never, uh, they never attacked me. They never, what's interesting too is as years went by, I found, well it was years, went by before the first internet. Myself and a couple other sysops in the Kansas City area, we got together and brought in internet email and news groups or whatever and had to explain to people what email was, had to explain to them how to, you know, you put uh, Jim Howard, the at sign, and you put, you know, Howard.net or whatever it is to send it. He had to have a little thing there to explain to him. But uh, I, I was always open. Oh, anyway. Uh, oh, the first, when the first internet service provider came to the Kansas City area, I went down, I mentioned this before, I think in a couple of videos, I went because things like this happened and it really was, made me feel good. I went down in person because they were the first internet service providers. I went down and said, sign me up. And they said, okay, what's your name? And I, you know, Jim Howard. Jim Howard, the sysop of Howard's Notebook. I said, yeah, I, you know, and this is a grown man, well, a young guy, but uh, you were the first bulletin board system that I called with my computer and then I got into chat with you and you were so nice and then I wanted to set up a, and you told me how you, I called and you told me how to set one up oh and then he said hey you know 
Joe, come out here, Joe, come out here. Joe came out, you know. And he said, this is Jim Howard. Jim Howard of Howard's Lord. And the guy, you know, oh, you were the first bulletin board system I called in. I, and I got into you, you know. And so those, that type of thing happened, you know, happened a lot. Made me feel really, really good. One time I went into a Radio Shack store and they had a computer there hooked up to the phone line. That was before the World Wide Web. They had it hooked up to a phone line. And the sales guy was saying, there's this computer bulletin. There's a thing called computer bulletin board system. Then you can connect through a modem. And there's this one, Howard's Notebook. Let me show you. You, It is great. You've got to look into it. I'm just standing, you know, just standing there. That was neat. But all those people treated me really, you know, I got treated really nice. Uh, so I've been lucky over over the years. Of course, you, you know, you you always have... When, in the past, when I said something about having fans around my family, they kind of snicker, you know, if I say, well, yeah, I got got a bunch of fans. I forget how it would come up, you know, but I got a bunch of fans, you know, and they would kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, and laugh or whatever behind my back, but I could hear them snickering even with my bad hearing. Um, but... Uh, I've had a few. It's you know strange. I have two thousand subscribers, and well, even before YouTube, and that was twenty oh five. I was one of the first people to stream live video. There wasn't any YouTube. There wasn't any see you see me. That was one of the first I think sites. But as as these sites came along, yeah, I signed up for them. I. I went there and used their services, but before they were around, I was streaming video. I don't know anybody who was streaming video before me, but then, you know, the way the world is, I'm sure there was people that were doing it, but uh, I had to stream it off my own computer, my own system, my own, and, and, the, internet, and the internet was slower then. Uh, right now I've got 60 down and 5 up and AT&T or whatever has put out on the street they haven't hooked anybody up here but I think that's 1 gig up and down and I think the service is going to be about 90 bucks and I'm poor but when they notify me that they have that service I'm going to I'll have to cut back on food, maybe medicine, but I'm going to get the service. But uh, I got off the subject and I'll never figure out what the hell. Uh, where was I and what was I doing? Anyway, um, leaving the world of PBS and going to uh, default um, no, going to PBS going to Howard one of the things I'm doing I'm going to try to do I've got a whole bunch of things that I'm signed up for I'm living on a limited income and I've got a whole bunch of things. I, I moved my, driving me crazy, I moved my whiteboard again and it's not level and it's driving me crazy but I can look over and I can see my bills and I can see what I've got and I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to go through there and um, cut some of those things out. Um, I think it's feed point, I think. I think I think that's the one I deleted. Uh, Cyberchimp, I deleted them. Live Journal, wasn't very much money. That was before 
uh, WordPress or whatever. I I I, I delete. I used to use them. I deleted them. I think it was only five dollars for two months or something. I deleted them. Uh, the site's still there, but I deleted my payments to them. Um, so, well, I have the rent to pay. I have the electric company to pay. T-Mobile for my cell phone. I pay for Netflix. Uh, I'm signed up with HG Host. Uh, signed up for eBay. Uh, signed up with Dream Hosting Company. I'm signed up with the Nimbus for something. Signed up with Hulu. I give five dollars a month to the local national public radio. Signed up for YouTube Red. Signed up for TubeBuddy. Signed up for EverHelp. I'm signed up for Office 365. I signed up for Skype again. I fucking hate Skype. I fucking never use Skype. And in fact, I think I have two Skype accounts now. I have no idea which is which. I have no idea how to cancel, you know. Uh, I think one of them, the one I'm, what I wanted to do with Skype was, and I still want to do, and if any of you are interested, you know, contact me. First, I've got to play with Skype. What I'd like to do is interviews. So using Skype, you know, I'd have my video here and your video would be here, however Skype works. And I would interview you and we would talk back, talk back and forth. I, there's a couple, at least a couple guys from the old days that I know who uh, did um, computer bulletin boards and I would like to interview them. And when I interview them, I'm not going to be talking about my bulletin board system. I want to ask them questions and talk about their, uh, I mean, I may say, oh yeah, I used FidoNet, or yeah, I did that, but I'm not going to be talking about me. I want to talk about them. I think I could do a good job of interviewing people on not just computer bulletin boards. I think I would make a good interviewer. I may be wrong. Uh, what I played around with a little bit, I've run video before and had a chat you know, window going where people could chat in the window. That really doesn't work. Um, uh, because somebody will say, what do you think about this? And then, then right away somebody else says, you know, hi, and somebody else says, what kind of computer are you using? Somebody else, and, it, and if, you're, if you're looking, oh, you know, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm using, I don't know what kind of computer it is. Uh, well, yeah, I'm in, the, I'm in Texas, and that doesn't work. So, I mean, I'm, there may be a chat thing going, but hopefully I won't be looking at it because it just doesn't, it just doesn't make for an interesting uh, video. I've seen a few people doing YouTube videos where they're, but <laughs> YouTube does, have, I think it's YouTube, I believe, I know there's some, or maybe it's a separate utility that you can run, where you can now be running a, a chat thing like that and doing, you know, a video live streaming or whatever, and a person can donate right then it pops up or whatever and it shows the person hey this person donated and so you could do uh, you know for five bucks I'll answer your question or you know something like that I can't see myself doing it but something like that maybe could be worked out I don't know uh, I'm not going to try to get into politics except <laughs> there, there are no and a CNN host uh, explained that there are no alternative facts. There are just facts. There is just truth. There is no alternative, you know, facts. And uh, 
I don't know. I'm sure Trump just won't listen to the people. I don't think he'll listen to the people around him. He has to get out of the campaigning mode. He has to get out, and he has to be, he should have, you know, his inauguration address should have been, you know, I'm your president. Uh, we're all going to work together. You know, give me a chance. Let's all work together for what's best for the United States. You know, it should not be an enemies list. It should not be, you know. And then for him to, for him and his press secretary or whatever to say, you know, after the election, you know, if, if he wanted to use that to get votes from his core, consist, from his core, got to not say bad things about from his supporters if he wants to use you know Washington DC Congress is no good all this kind of stuff and the media is no good all that that's fine but now to attack the press to attack the news media and to say you know you're gonna pay you will be sorry. Uh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Uh, he's got to get out of that attack mode. He can't take. He can't take criticism. And I don't think any of the uh, criticism of him has been. Uh, wrong or well the thing about I don't think the well I don't think the intelligence agency leased, you know, leaked it but yeah the report about the stuff about him I don't think should have been released but that information has to go you know the, the, the intelligence agency is required to brief the gang of eight and then they are required to brief other people. And then if a congressman or whatever contacts the intelligence agency, and, I mean, that's it has to go and those people, and uh, somebody's gonna leak information and they should not have leaked that information <clears throat> uh, about him. But I don't think the intelligence, and two, he's got to, I've known some people like Donald Trump. We had to work for him. But you know, uh, especially like one of them that I have mentioned many times in in these videos and little things about grievances that I did and all that type of stuff against a guy who, who <laughs> was very racist, but I actually kind of liked him. But I kind of liked him, I think, because when I got merit reviews from this guy, he praised me to, I mean, he gave me these fantastic merit reviews. And <laughs> I kind of like that. Uh, but even, you know, he thought that he really, he had this thing about him. I bought a new Cadillac. But I understood that he was in the military and he couldn't afford a new Cadillac. But then he was working where he could afford a new, but he got a new Cadillac, parked it outside the emergency room entrance, went in and got all the department heads and people to come out and look at his new Cadillac. And I could stand over there and I could see them, you know, even though they were like, he was a department head and they were department heads and they should be like equals, but I could see them rolling their eyes and not liking that. He just did stuff like that, but he, Donald Trump, before the uh, talking to the CIA at the CIA headquarters, when he went over to see him and talked to him, and I'm thinking went over to mend fences and let him and let his employees know that hey, I'm with you and. I got your back and that type of stuff. Uh, but when he 
he went there, you know, he's before them and he says to him in the speech, you know, I'm really, really smart. I'm really smart. Yeah, I am. I'm smart. Who, you know, even this guy who was director of security that I worked for, who was, had a high opinion of himself and all that, he never, I mean, he, he said, you know, to me and, you know, I'm going to win this, you know, I'm, you know, such and such, you know, I'm going to win this, the, the, you did a grievance against me, I'm going to win. I'm going, you know, or, or administration's with me, and when none of these cases were true, you know. But he never ever said, I, but I could tell, I knew he was smart. Uh, and he did fantastic, he wrote fantastic things, made a manual, complete manual for the security, you know, for each officer with procedures, and he did that, but he couldn't handle people. He couldn't handle the simplest thing which was really surprising. He was a, well, there again, he told all of us that he was a colonel in the army, which I believed. And uh, then I saw when he passed away in the obituaries, I said that he was a major. And I got a feeling, I think that when you retire, now he retired as a, with a disability, but I think if you're an officer I think what they do, I don't know exactly, I wasn't in the military. I think what they do is like, you're retired, but they boost you up a grade. You get more money, and then, and so I am not sure he was a, I don't think he was a colonel, because they said he was a major, so I think maybe he was a captain, and he retired, and they he was a major, you know, they made him a major, I don't know. But he never said, I'm really, really smart, and, Trump does those kind of things, which is bizarre, you know, like, I'm really, really rich, you know. No, I'm not a, I'm not a millionaire, I'm a billionaire, somebody, you know, he sued a news guy who put that he was a millionaire, he sued him, saying, you know, you, you know, you slandered me, you said, I'm a billionaire, and you said I'm a millionaire. So, I don't know. Uh, Donald Trump's, what's her name? I can't remember. I shouldn't even talk about her. So I can't remember. The lady that he has put up for, I mean, the people around him, it's, it's too bad with the problems that he has, that Donald Trump, his makeup and the way he is, it's too bad that he didn't surround himself, that he hadn't surrounded himself with good people and then you know they could help him uh, although I don't think he listens to people but I mean they, they'd be there to help him but he's got some really bad people that he's picked to be around him and that makes it that makes it worse so but of his picks uh, his well Rick Perry should not be secretary of uh, energy. That's the agency he that he couldn't remember that he wanted to do. He wanted to do away with three agencies, and that's the third one that he in the debates that he couldn't remember. He wanted to do with the secretary. He wanted to do with the Department of Education and Department of uh, something else, and then he couldn't remember the third one, which was the Department of Energy that he wanted to do away with. Now he's going to be appointed secretary of the Department of, you know, Energy, which <laughs> is in charge of our nuclear weapons, nuclear energy, all that type of stuff. That, you know, all that follows, falls into the Department of Energy. I think that's like 80% of what they do. Manage it, control it, keep track of it, all that falls into the de that department, and he is, he didn't he doesn't he didn't know that, and now he's going to be. But the but the one that really <clears throat> worries me <coughs> is the lady that's nominated for is it 
I can't remember him, boss, be boss or whatever. <clears throat> She's been picked to be uh, Secretary of Education. And she hates public education. She wants to do away with public education. She is in favor of charter schools, and she's in favor of vouchers, and she's in favor of parochial schools. She's in favor, of course, she's a born-again Christian, so she's in favor of, you know, Baptist schools. But she's also in favor of, you know, Catholic schools and Jewish schools or whatever. She just, and she, her kids have never gone to public schools. Uh, she's never belonged to the PP, PTA, Parent Teachers Association. Uh, she, she, she's just the worst person. Charter schools are private schools. They take money out of public education, but they're private schools by private corporations in order to make money. And they're like 16% of the schools in the United States. They don't do any better than the public schools, which is not, not good. Um, they, you know, and sure, if you have a charter school in your community, if you have a, a community, you know, a nice community that has money and whatever, you can get a charter school and, and uh, might be nice. But the problem is, they're not, the charter school isn't going to take a, a, a kid who has a disability, a kid that's blind or a kid that's deaf or a kid that has learning disabilities or a kid who doesn't speak English or they're not going to take those because they're just set up to make, you know, to make money. They don't make money. They lose money if they have to provide, you know, and the public schools have to educate and take care of those things. So it's so she's, she should definitely should not be. They should get somebody. I don't understand why he... He can still be president, you know, like Abraham Lincoln. Of course, you can't compare things from 100 years ago or 200 years ago. But Abraham Lincoln picked good men, but he picked men also. He picked men who didn't agree with him. And he had him on his, you know, that was his cabinet. Men who fundamentally disagreed with him and he had them on, you know, on his cabinet. I don't understand why you can't pick good people. Two, what drives me crazy is the thing with judges. It, it shouldn't matter whether a, a judge is Democrat or Republican. That shouldn't enter into it because a judge should rule on what the law is and his personal politics should not come into it at all. You know, it should be, you know, you should have some judge, say, on the Supreme Court and, you know, the judge, the case comes before him and the judge has strong feelings about something he's, you know, hardcore Republican or, you know, liberal Democrat or whatever, but he should be ruling on what the law is, and it should be like, you know, maybe it'd be like, oh, fuck, I don't want to, you know, I hate to see this case be decided this way, but that's the law, and I'm having to, you know, it shouldn't be, but it is, and I don't know how to correct the situation. Every decision, everything is, you know, well, this case in the Sixth Circuit Court of, you know, California was decided, and, uh, you know, two of the judges were appointed by a Republican, and one was appointed by a Democrat, and it shouldn't, 
That shouldn't enter into it at all, but it does, and I don't know how we correct it. Uh, if I don't know how you, I just don't know how you can correct that. Do you have somebody other than the President of the United States appoint or come up with a list? I don't know. I don't think that would work. Are you going to have the Bar Association put forward a list of five people? You know, we think these five. I don't think that would work. How could, you know, the Bar? Um, I just don't know what the answer to it is, but it bugs me. Okay, well, uh, thanks for watching.